नमो बुथाय दिस इज अभिनव कुलेचा एंड आई वेलकम यू टू दिस चैनल एंड टू दिस वीडियो बुद्ध सेड दैट इफ यू सी द नोबल ट्रूथ नंबर टू द कॉज ऑफ सफरिंग इज अटैचमेंट्स क्रेविंग्स राइट सो टुडे आई जस्ट ट्राई टू फाइंड आउट सर्टन सूतास विच आर ऑन ऑन क्रेविंग एंड अटैचमेंट सो देर आर सम फाइव सिक्स सूतास आई कुड फाइंड एंड आई एम कवरिंग द मेन मेन पॉइंट्स ऑफ द सूतास which is which is my learning uh, from my limited understanding the links to the sutras are given in the description so you can read the full sutras uh, at your end right and uh, maybe i'll have to break this video in two parts if the if it is going long right okay so uh, so this was the first one that i'm reading uh, is from so it was said 15 the book of the ones the fetter of craving the fetter the chain the chain of craving so, so we are all chained in craving right so buddha says mendicants i do not see a single fetter fettered by which people wander and transmigrate for a long time like the fetter of craving fettered by craving people wander and transmigrate for a long time so people remain buddha said that there is no bigger fetter no bigger chain than the chain of craving and attachment which binds the beings right beings you and me in this samsara and we continue to born again and die and we continue to born again and die and see old age and suffering all forms of suffering why because of our attachments right so buddha buddha said craving is a person's partner as they transmigrate on this long journey they go from this state to another but don't escape transmigration knowing this danger that craving is the cause of suffering rid of craving free of grasping the mendicant would wander mindful right so what my learning is that be more and more mindful of these attachments of these craving see i have craving you have craving so i have like craving for food right so i i love good food and that craving i know very well it is in me what i have to do is only to be mindful of that when this craving arises right be mindful of this craving as it arises and as it falls right even if you have the food have it but be mindful of this fact that you know this type this craving how it is arising just be mindful the more i bring mindfulness in my life in my attachments for example i have attachments towards my family right and every we all have to so be mindful of those attachments and as we become mindful these chains of these attachments that are there they will grow loose right they will become loose right okay next we come to uh craving the weaver number discourses 4.199 uh, so here buddha is actually giving a lot of analogies in this similes in this uh, so buddha says what are the 18 currents of cravings that derive from the interior when there is this concept i am there are the concepts i am such i am thus i am otherwise i am fleeting i am lasting mine such is mine thus is mine otherwise is mine also is mine such is mine this is also mine otherwise is also mine i will be i will be such i will be this i will be otherwise these are the 18 currents of craving that drive from the interior right buddha says mendicants i will teach you about craving the weaver migrant creeping clinging this world is choked by it engulfed by it it makes the world tangled like a yarn tangled like a yarn knotted like a ball of thread and matted like rushes and reeds not escaping the places of loss the you know the hell realms the bad places the underworld transmigration so here basically what my understanding is that i need to get rid of this notion of i right and the entire practice of insight meditation that uh, mahasi sayadaw's practice of insight meditation it's basically to get rid of this i we have this i thing that is there in everything we do till the time that we are unmindful we have this i notion within us that i am doing this i get pleasure i i have this notion again see when i'm saying i i am saying i have this notion right because this i thing is so embedded in us in by the society and how we are conditioned we have been conditioned to think that we are a permanent self whereas we are not my mind is continuously changing moment by moment my body is continuously changing there is no permanent abhinav but abhinav thinks that 
Abhinav is permanent. And this wrong view that Abhinav has of permanence creates craving and attachment in him. So, basically what I understand is that let go of this notion of I. Every time, whatever I am doing, I will focus on the thing that is happening. See, there may be some negative emotion, positive emotion coming in my mind. So, I will only just note it that happiness, happiness, pain, pain, suffering, suffering, any pain in the body, pain, body, pain, pain, whatever movements I make, sitting, sitting, walking, walking, I basically note the various things that are happening in the body and mind and not be unmindful and be under this illusion that I am there and I am doing the, these things. This I that I have, this I has to be banished. Once this I, this permanent self is banished, then we realize that there is nothing to hold on to, there is nothing to cling on to. So we are all practicing in this direction and I hope some of what I am saying is kind of you know, resonating with you. right? Then there is number discourses 5.3 uh, with Nagita. So there is this story with Nagita, uh, Buddha. Uh, Nagita was like in this a Buddha, a Venerable Nagita was Buddha's attendant and they were all going, Buddha and Nagita, they were going from here and there and wherever he goes, uh, wherever Buddha used to, and Buddha became very popular by that time, so wherever he went, Brahmins and householders used to come to him and Buddha did not get time to any any rest. So Nagita said, Buddha, please rest, now it's your time to rest. It's like when it rains heavily and the water flows downhill. In the same way, whatever the Buddha now does, the Brahmins and householders will incline in the same way as, as will the people of town and country. Why is that? Because of Buddha's ethics and wisdom. So now Buddha said, Nagita, may I never be famous. May fame never come to me. There are those who can't get the bliss of renunciation, the bliss of seclusion, the bliss of peace, the bliss of awakening, what, what they want, when they want without trouble or difficulty like I am. So, Buddha is saying, let me never be famous. I don't want to be famous like other people. right? Because they will remain stuck in that. They will not ne never be able to find the pleasure that I find of seclusion, of stillness. right? So, they said, let them enjoy the filthy pleasures. Let them enjoy the filthy, lazy pleasures of possession, honor and popularity. Then Buddha is giving certain, so Buddha is here attacking this whole thing about wanting fame, the pursuit of fame. That, see, we all, somewhere or the other, we all want in our jobs, in our, you know, relationships, in our society, we want this thing that I should be famous, right? So we have to let go of this. Then Buddha is saying about this thing that what you do, what you do will determine, there is an outcome for that. So Buddha was a teacher. Buddha said, if you do this, this will be the impact. There are certain higher laws of which we are all governed. If we harm someone, then harm will come to us. One of the higher laws is the law of karma. right? So Buddha is a teacher who said that, see, I am telling you the way. You do this, you'll get this result. You do that, you get that result. Then it is upon us what you do. right? I cannot take the decision for you. right? So Buddha said, when you eat, drink, chew and taste, what you eat, drink, chew and taste ends up in excrement and urine. This is the outcome. So this is a given fact. What we eat, it ends up as excrement as urine. Then uh, Buddha said, when loved ones decay and perish, sorrow, lamentation, pain, sadness and distress arise. Again, this happens. Similarly, Buddha was giving four or five things. Like for example, Buddha says, when we meditate observing the impermanence in the six fields of contact, revulsion at the contact becomes stabilized. Right? So this is again a positive outcome that happens. So Buddha is saying, what you do, According to that will happen. Then it is upon our cho choice what we want to do. So always remember that thing. That what we are doing, there will be implications of our thoughts, actions, speech, words. Right? So we have to live in accordance with the Noble Eightfold Path at all times. We should endeavor to do. Whether we are able to do or not do, that is another different matter. Depending upon the level of our consciousness and you know, our practice, how strong it is. But we have to at least endeavor. That intention is important. Then there is the thing about... Uh, okay. uh, let me just take this one and then maybe we can break it. Uh,
into two parts. Then Buddha said, there's this thing about with Vishakha. So Vishakha was like, uh, uh, Buddha was staying in Havati and uh, uh, beloved granddaughter of Vishakha, Vishakha's beloved granddaughter had passed away. So she was like, at the middle of the day, Vishakha with wet clothes and hair went to the Buddha and bowed and sat down. So Buddha asked her, where from you are coming in the middle of the day with wet clothes? So Vishakha said, sir, my beloved granddaughter had just passed away. That's why I've come here with wet clothes. So Buddha said, uh, what do you think, Vishakha? Would there ever be a time when your clothes and hair were not wet? No, sir. Uh, enough times they were not wet because I had so many, many grandchildren and grandchildren. So Buddha said, those who have 100 loved ones have 100 sufferings. Those who have 90 or 87, 86, 40, 50, 30, 29, 8 have, suffer, have, have one suffering. Those who have no loved ones have no suffering. They are free of sorrow, stains and anguish. Then Buddha expressed a very heartfelt sentiment. All the sorrows and lamentations and the countless forms of the world, suffering in the world occur because of those that we love. Without loved ones, they do not occur. That's why those who have no loved ones at all in this world are happy and free of grief. So aspiring to the sorrowless and stainless, they have no loved ones in the world at all. So here, it's a very strong statement, but please understand what Buddha is trying to say here. Buddha is not trying to say that go into a forest or cut off your relationships from all the people. Buddha is trying to say that do not have any specific chosen loved ones. You know what, generally what we do is that we have like our immediate family as our chosen loved ones. Whatever harms them, whatever you know, impact them, causes us distress. So we have to raise our consciousness to, to that level that, you know, there is no specific, special uh, kind of a love that we have for only the immediate set of people and not for others. We should, you know, love everyone, but and do not have the attachments that we have towards our, our loved ones. So the attachment to our loved ones is, is this world, this Sutta is dedicated to that, that let go of this attachment. And that's one of the biggest, hardest things for us to do, you know, uh, uh, letting go of the attachments of towards the loved ones. So do not have loved ones means love them, but do not have any attachments because that attachments will lead to sorrow. Do not impose your ideas on them. Do not expect them that they, they will meet your demands. Do not have any expectations because attachments create expectations. And expectations don't fulfill because everything is changing. They are also changing. You are also changing. And then this expectation, this craving, this attachment fuels your suffering. So please understand and let's come out of the attachments. Not at all easy. I understand that. Uh, okay, I will maybe just finish. There are two, three suttas. Then I will finish in one video only. Then there is this uh, number discourses 4.159 uh, on none. So, so here basically Ananda, Ananda was saying to the nun, Sister, this body is produced by food. Relying on food, you should give up food. This body is produced by craving. Relying on craving, you should give up craving. This body is produced by conceit. Relying on conceit, you should give up conceit. This body is produced by sex. The Buddha spoke of breaking off everything to do with sex. So Buddha says, so Ananda says that if you eat food, don't eat the food for fun, indulgence, adornment, decoration, but only to sustain the body, to avoid harm and to support the spiritual practice. In this way, I shall put an end to the old discomfort and not give rise to new discomfort and I will live blamelessly and at ease. So similarly for everything Ananda says, Okay. So this is one thing again is moderation. What my understanding is, okay, we are in we are lay people. We are in a family life. We have to just be moderate in whatever we do, our our eating, our sexual activity. All these things have to be moderate enough to sustain us, sustain our spiritual practices. At one time we have to reach at this level where our life is centered on our spiritual practice. And everything else, our family, careers, jobs, relationships, everything is around that. And everything is just there to
to sustain what you know that our practice is so we have to make that much a focus to our practice and do indulge in indulge in everything but just be mindful of you know how much you know don't go too much excessive and don't also be too much repulsive also right then there is just this uh, thing about eight on a cave this is an anthology of discourses 4.2 a beautiful kind of a poetic way uh, uh, so buddha says that the chain of desire the bond of life's pressures are hard, hard to escape for one cannot free another looking to the past or future they pray for these pleasures right we pray for pleasures we make the prayers to god and everything that i want this and and, and, and that causes our rebirth we keep on in this samsara greedy fixated infatuated by sensual pleasures they are incorrigible habitually immoral when led to suffering they lament what will become of us when we pass away from here that's why a person should train in this life should you know that anything in this world is wrong don't act wrongly on account of that for the wise say life is short life is short right whatever we have to do we have to do now i see the world's population floundering and this is what buddha's compassion was for everyone that buddha knew that they are all suffering and they are all like banging their heads but they don't know how to come out of suffering and that is what made buddha started to share his knowledge i see the world's population floundering given to craving for future lives base men wail in the jaws of death not rid of craving for life after life see them flounder over belongings like fish in puddles of dried up stream fish in puddles of dried up stream flounder over belongings you know running after belongings seeing this live unselfishly nothing is mine this is just happening things are arising and passing away nothing is i nothing is mine forming no attachment to future lives do not have any attachments to future lives that i be born in particular realm right i will be born in comfort no nothing like that just follow the path of the buddha and our karmas will make us be born with whatever realm we will not desire or insist for ourselves to be born rid of desire for both ends having completely understood contact free from greed doing nothing for which they dream themselves the wise don't cling to the seen and heard having completely understood perception and having crossed the flood the sage not clinging to possessions with the dart plucked out living diligently does not long for this world or the next right so this was another thing that be more and more mindful not desiring anything not desiring any possessions right in our mind not entertaining all those things let those things come and go you know you earn money let you let yourself earn money let the money come it's not that you say no to anything but don't getting not getting attached then the last is link discourses 4.8 life span delighting so there mara the wicked went up to the buddha and recited this verse your children bring bring your delight your ch- cattle brings you delight attachments are man's delight without attachment there is no delight your children bring you sorrow your cattle bring you sorrow for attachments are a man's sorrow without attachment there are no sorrows then mara the wicked thinking the buddha knows me the holy one knows me miserable and sad vanished right there so mara is what mara is the personification of evil so even here mara is mara is themselves himself giving knowledge that your children your cattle your belongings they bring you sorrow they bring you delight and they bring you suffering see something that gives you delight is the same thing that will bring you suffering so mara himself here is not like misguiding he is knowing he is giving actually knowledge to us the e- personification of evil only is saying that this is how you know you will be trapped in evil right and then mara says the buddha knows me the holy one knows me so if i know so basically if we know attachments and cravings and how this whole thing all the desires and things then mara cannot kind of trap us right so we have to be become like buddha right so that mara cannot you know uh, trap us so this is all the some 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 discourses i could find on factor on the craving and attachments if i have missed any discourse do please share in the comments the links to the discourses are given in the description do please read at your end it will help reading buddha's 
words helps purify our intellect something happens i don't know but whatever this is my experience it happens something magical starts happening right so thank you so much for watching this video namo buddhaye namo buddhaye